Hi, it's Chris from the Wild Bear Patch. And today is day five for mindfully meditating in Matthew or mm, five. Okay, yes, I said it. Okay. Now, Matthew 5 starts the Sermon on the Mount. And the Sermon on the Mount starts with the Beatitudes. And they are most famously shared in the um, Matthew 5. So, here we go. Matthew 5, the Beatitudes. The first one is poor in spirit, and the kingdom of heaven will be given to them. Mourn. Now, the first one, they're poor in spirit. Their spirit is poor. I think of the Beatitudes as a progression of growing in your face. So this is someone who is struggling and seeking. Mourn, for they shall be comforted. This is someone who recognizes their need for a savior. They're mourning what they've done and their specific situation. Meek, they recognize they need a savior. They shall inherit the world. Hunger and thirst after righteous. I think meek is when they actually ask the Lord into their heart, somewhere between mourning and meek. Um, hungering and thirst after righteousness. That's the part where we want to grow. We want to study the word. We want to be with Christ's people. We want to pray. We want to spend time with God through Christ. So if you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you will be filled. Merciful. If you know how much you were given that you didn't deserve, you would be merciful to others. How much mercy you've been given, you would be merciful to others, and then you will be shown more mercy. Pure in heart. This goes kind of like, you know, how can a young man stay on the path of purity? By living according to your word. First um, John 2, 1 through 2 basically says we've all sinned and we have an advocate with Jesus Christ. Romans 5.10 talks about being reconciled through Christ. So pure in heart doesn't mean our hearts have never sinned. It means that our hearts have been cleansed and we keep them in a right relationship with God. Um, and that the pure in heart will see God. Peacemakers. Peacemakers, people who do not know God, are at enmity with God. They're God's enemies because they're on the outside. They are not part of the family. And people who are peacemakers share with people how God is not this horrible, angry, terrible, wrathful God. And that we need a Savior and help them be made at peace with God. And the peacemakers will be called sons of God. Persecuted for righteousness sake. Now well, they hated Jesus. They're going to hate us too. Especially for righteousness sake. This isn't being persecuted because you're a jerk. This is being persecuted because your very life convicts them. Okay. And they, I have heard of people who they walk so closely to the Lord that their life convicts others. So if you're persecuted for righteousness sake, yours is the kingdom of God. And then it says, you are blessed when they insult and persecute you and falsely say every kind of evil against you because of me. So rejoice and be glad because your reward is great in heaven. God's world is, is in total contradiction to what the world world is. Then it goes on, Jesus didn't come to abolish the law, he came to fulfill it. If you're angry at your brother and you don't get it right, it's as bad as committing murder. Um, people need conflict resolution in their relationships. Lust of the eyes is deadly. Divorce and remarriage. Truthfulness 
he talks about being truthful. So let your yay be yay and your nay be nay or yes, yes, no, no. Anything else is more than the evil one. We should be so truthful that we can say yes or no and they know that's it. So then there's go the second mile and then to love and pray for your enemies. There's a lot to unpack in this and I'm sorry that this is a little longer than usual. But I just wanted you to hear my thoughts on the Beatitudes. It really helps me to see the progression. So the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you and give you the peace that passes all understanding and keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Thank you and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.